the Messiah Luther Church, he is risen. Today is Reformation Sunday, and there's a couple important things that are going to happen. There's going to be a processional. We'll actually rise on the third verse and remain standing for the rest of that. And then also in the closing hymn, uh, Thy Strong Word, the sixth verse is a doxological verse, and we will rise for that one as well. So with that, we will begin with A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And may you forgive me. your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Defend us against all enemies, and grant to your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The first reading is from the book of Revelation, the 14th chapter. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. The epistle is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law so that every mouth may be stopped, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time, so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith. In Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, 
Everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess our Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of our life, and the life of we continue with the hymn of the day. Please be seated. Amazing grace. <laughs> Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father, and from our Lord, who is the Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. It can be a dangerous thing to not know the situation that you're in. For example, if you're in the path of a flood or a tornado, and you don't know it, that's a dangerous thing. If you have a cancer growing inside of yourself, and you don't know it, that's a dangerous thing. If you're on a flight with a person 
who has Ebola and you don't know it, that's a dangerous thing. Not to know these things can be a matter of life and death. Well, that was the situation for the Pharisees in our gospel lesson today. And it is, in fact, the situation for many people in our world today. And it really is a matter of life and death, eternal life and eternal death. For the Pharisees, as we heard, they thought they were free. And Jesus told them, or they told Jesus, I should say, we are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. I guess those 400 years in Egypt and those 70 years in Babylon really don't count, huh? <laughs> but setting that time aside, the Pharisees themselves in their lifetime, although subject to the Roman authorities, weren't slaves. They could come and go as they wanted and pretty much do whatever they wanted. Well, mostly. And many people today believe the same thing. We're free. We sing it in our national anthem. We abolished slavery in our country over, four, over 150 years ago. And we work hard against it all around the world. But even more than that, we are not only formally free in that sense of the word, but we would assert that most people individually have free will, that we are in control of our lives. We are masters of our universe. We are enslaved, we are controlled, we are obligated, we are bound to no one and no thing. But to think that is a dangerous place to be. For while that may be true on certain levels, like you can freely choose the clothes that you're going to wear today, or the cereal you're going to eat for breakfast, or what car you are going to buy. You do have that sort of free will in those type of things. But you do not have free will when it comes to spiritual matters. Not by nature. Since that very day that Adam and Eve fell and plunged themselves and whole of creation into sin, you've lost that ability to choose. And you're not the exception. St. Paul said, there is no distinction, there is no difference. There are not some born this way and some born that way. And some born neutral. No, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that, my brothers and sisters, is you. If you sin, Jesus said, you are a slave to sin. And that is true whether your name is Abraham, or if you're a first century Pharisee, or if you're a 21st century American, or a little 16th century monk whose name was Martin. You see, that's what Luther first realized. He realized the situation that he was in that he was a slave to sin and all those things he was being told to do and being told he should do and that he could do, if he just tried hard enough, he couldn't do. And the harder he tried, the worse it got, and the more he looked at himself, the more he confessed, the more he saw his sin, he couldn't stop it, he couldn't get around it, it was the whirlwind tossing him about that he just couldn't get away from. It was the cancer growing within him that he just couldn't cut out. They told him he was free, but he knew a truth far different than that. He was in bondage. He was a slave to sin. By the way, so are you. And the person next to you, that's why you sin. You're not a sinner because you do sins. You do sins because you're a sinner. That's why you sin even though you don't want to. You want to do what's right, but you don't. You make promises and you want to keep them, but you don't. 
You lash out and you hate yourself for it. You doubt and worry when you know you shouldn't. You covet and you lust. And you have this weird paradox within yourself that those things that you are proud of about yourself you know are nothing but a lie. You want to believe you're a good Christian. You want others to believe it too. But you know that's not true. That underneath your proper button-down, good-looking appearance is a filthy, rotten, putrid, maggot-infested cesspool of a sinner. Yes, you stink. And while we're at it, there's a pretty good stench that's wafting forth from this pulpit today, too. Now, it may not be pleasant to know and to acknowledge that, but it's dangerous not to know that, to be fooled and deceived and blind and to die in your sin, physically and spiritually, and be a slave forever. And so while it may not be pleasant, it's good to know that and then to hear this too. There is freedom for you. Slavery is your beginning, but it need not be your end. For St. Paul said, the righteousness of God or the freedom from sin that God wants for you has been manifested. It happened and is for the whole world apart from the law, apart from what you can do or you cannot do. The righteousness of God, or again, the freedom of God, through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe, or as Jesus said it in this way, if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. That's what the Reformation was all about. Telling the truth about the situation that we are in and then pointing to the solution. Pointing not to yourself and to your efforts, your doing, but pointing outside of yourself, away from yourself, to Jesus. For if you are to be free, he's the only one that can set you free. Free from slavery to sin, free from fear of death, free from the bondage of the grave, free from the oppression of the devil, free to live as a child of God that you are. If the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. And so the Reformation is not about doing, but receiving, receiving the work that Jesus has done for you, a gift from him. And here it is. Please listen carefully. Baptism is the sun setting you free, washing you clean from your sin, breaking those bonds that you were born with, and raising you in Jesus' resurrection to a new life. Here it is for you. Absolution is the sun setting you free, proclaiming and promising to you the forgiveness Jesus earned for you in his death and resurrection, beating back the enemy seeking to enslave you once again. Here it is for you. The gospel is the sun setting you free. Those stories you hear in scripture, they're about you. You are the leper that's been cleansed. You are the blind who can now see. You are the deaf who can now hear. You are the dead that has now been raised to life. Here it is for you and the supper the sun setting you free, feeding you with the medicine of immortality. The body and blood that died and rose cannot die again, given to you. That though you die, you may too live forever. Here it is for you. Here is Jesus for you. Here is life and freedom here for you. Here. That's what the Reformation was all about. The baptismal liturgy proclaimed that again and all that had been added to it over the years that obscured it and made it really hard to see was stripped away. The absolution was again joyously announced as the good news and all the talk of merits and satisfaction and you having to do exactly the right thing the right way or it wouldn't work or it would be diminished was silenced. The gospel was preached. Jesus was preached. 
not saints, and not as an example, but as a savior. And the supper was given to sinners. Yes, to sinners. You didn't have to make yourself worthy to receive it. It made you worthy, for in it was the forgiveness and life that you need. Take and eat. This is given for you. These gifts for you, and they're still for you. Unworthy you, sinner you. Whatever you've done, it's really that simple. But it's also that important. And now, as always, the devil is constantly tempting us to believe that religion is all about what we do. That, yes, Jesus died for you, but that's in the past tense, he'll say. What matters now is what you do, that you change, you do better, that you're a good Christian. Be the person God wants you to be. Because if the devil can do that, if the devil gets you to focus on that, on yourself and what you do, then he's well on the way to driving you away from your past tense, Jesus. By despair, for you will never measure up to all that you ought to be doing. And so you'll just give up. Or pride will set in, thinking that you've done it and really don't need Jesus anymore. You've earned your salvation. Don't fall for it. Know the situation that you're in. You are a sinner, but you have a Savior. That's such a simple message, isn't it? And yet we keep messing it up, thinking there must be something more we can do. It can't be that easy or that good. Well, it wasn't easy. It took a cross and death, but it is good. For all God does is good and perfect, and for you. He's not doing all this for himself. He doesn't need it. He's doing it for you because you do need it. You need his love. You need his gifts. You need him, and he is here for you. Now, that will have an effect on your life and how you live and what you do and what's important to you and how you invest your time and your energy, but not because it's your doing that you're changing, that you're doing better, that you're being a better Christian than what you were before. It's because of Jesus' forgiveness and his life. They're living in you, according to Galatians chapter 2, because you've been set free from all the old horrible master of sin and now you can live a new life under the freedom of the cross. A better life, a good life from a loving master, a saving one. And how can that not change things? It changes everything and everything in your life, it really does. And that little sixth century monk just wanted everyone to know that. That freedom and life, that love, that gift. He didn't want to start a movement. He never wanted a church named after him. He didn't really think of himself as anything other than a beggar sinner before God and before everyone else. He just preached the forgiveness of sins. And it made all the difference, didn't it? That forgiveness makes a huge difference in the world. It started a reformation, not one that just happened 500 years ago, but a reformation each and every time that message is proclaimed, starting from Adam and Eve when they heard it. And Jesus did it. And now to the absolution and the gospel and the supper. That forgiveness changes things. For that word is a strong and powerful word, a mighty word. It turns beggar sinners like you and me into children of God. For that word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. 
And that word today wants you to know that all your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. For if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. In Jesus' holy name, amen and amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue with our hymn of response, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less.
Help us to bring your grace to those in darkness and grant them freedom through the forgiveness of their sins. Bless the missionaries serving far and near and the new congregations they establish in your name. Lord, your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of power and might, you have established governments and the order of law for the protection of all people and to preserve the freedom to worship you in spirit and in truth. Grant to our president, our governor, the Congress of these United States, and the legislature of our state, wisdom, humility, and integrity, that all may enjoy true justice and the protection of life from its conception to its natural end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy and gracious God, your power is revealed chiefly in showing mercy to those in need. Give to the sick healing, to the troubled peace, to the grieving comfort, and to the dying peace. Hear us first on behalf of Jean, Dennis, Gwen, Tina, Carol, Mike, and all those we name in our hearts before you. According to your gracious promise, grant patience to those in tribulation and trial. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have given great gifts to your people and provided resources to provide for their own needs and for the poor. Bless the agencies and programs of your church by which your people give aid and support to those in need. Help us to provide gainful employment to all people, that they may enjoy the fruits of their labors and honor you with the works of their hands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O faithful Lord, throughout the ages you spoke hope through the prophets until that day when you delivered up your only Son to be our Savior and Redeemer. Bless those who are just learning the Gospel, and bless us with the desire to know and keep your word. Encourage your people to avail themselves of the grace of confession and absolution, so that they may forgive one another and live in the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God and Father, we pray to grant us all good things that will benefit us in body and soul, and to prevent anything harmful to us or to our salvation. Teach us to live in contentment with your will and purpose, and in the freedom of you alone, supply to serve you with all our heart, mind, body, and soul. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy comes the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Almighty and merciful God, we have again worshipped in your presence and received both forgiveness for our many sins and the assurance of your love in Jesus Christ. We thank you for this undeserved grace and ask you to keep us in faith until we inherit eternal salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. <laughs>
I'm going to have him come stand up here. It's so nice to have Pierce and his family back visiting. Yes, indeed. That's fun. Um, quite the drive. Uh, sorry about the circumstances. Uh, you probably heard Dennis is in the prayers. He's in the hospital. Um, also, we have Jean uh, Garber's in the hospital as well. Uh, so keep them in your prayers and their families. Uh, also, uh, you've heard the name Mike. That's my younger brother. Um, he is under hospice and probably at the end of his day. So keep him in your prayers as well. Any other announcements? Tonight, you will be able to have devotions at the normal time online. Um, also, the service will be published, Lord willing, by this afternoon. That is all. May God bless you all. Have a wonderful Reformation Day. Let me give you a handshake. There you go. God's blessings. Mm -hmm.